<laughs> right, we're joined now by Mariana Spring, uh, who became the first ever disinformation and social media reporter for the BBC back in 2020. Uh, and for those who are not actually familiar with exactly what you do, Mariana, um, describe your role and kind of like why it was created for us. So what I do is investigate the real-world consequences of online disinformation, trolling, conspiracy theories, how they're affecting real people. And I've been really busy because those kinds of conspiracies and falsehoods have boomed during the pandemic, and then we're also seeing them around the war in Ukraine right now. Mm. There's also this new research that's come out, Mariana, that reveals that we are not nearly as good at spotting this stuff as we think we are. So what's going on there? Are we bad at identifying it, or is there just more of it than there has been before? Before. There's definitely more of it, um, particularly because we've had lots of really scary world events happening, and that means there's been a huge increase in these kinds of false videos or conspiracies that everything's a hoax and not what we think. But also a lot of the tactics have become more sophisticated. It can be harder to spot false or fake accounts because they look like real people, they use real pictures. Or a lot of this disinformation exploits and targets our own fear, distrust and emotions. In fact, there was a story that went really viral during the pandemic. Uh, people thought, Woolworths was reopening because there was a tweet um, and it said Woolworths is back and loads of people were really excited. It obviously exploited and played on their nostalgia. Only Woolworths wasn't even spelt right in uh, the tweet <laughs> where it was wow. announced. Oh, wow. And it turned out a teenager uh, in Yorkshire had created this account as part of a project um, at school to test brands. That's, so wow. The bad yeah. spelling is something to look out for. We might come back to that. Definitely. But on the kind of like misinformation of news and stuff, uh, everybody is reading about the news in the UK, uh, Ukraine currently at the minute. Um, and it's difficult to figure out what stories are true, which ones are false. What is the disinformation that's reaching us here in the UK? And you know, how are we supposed to deal with it or spot it? I think it's important around the war in Ukraine to think about how, I mean, everything on social media reaches everyone. And so a lot of people in Ukraine right now are being affected by falsehoods, conspiracies, disinformation, because they're living this and the reality they're living has been denied to them. But here in the UK, we're seeing a lot of those posts, conspiracies, mm. stuff on social media. Um, there's one picture in particular that people might have seen. Um, it's of a woman. She's leaving an attack in a hospital in Mariupol. Um, she was waiting to have her baby. Um, this has been seen everywhere. It went really viral. Mm -hmm. um, and a load of people on social media and then also Russian officials accused this woman of acting, that she was pretending to be women in other photos, that she'd had makeup put on, um, that it was all staged. I interviewed some of her closest friends for this new podcast I'm doing, War on Truth, where I look at the stories of these people caught up in this stuff, um, and they told me, no, it absolutely wasn't staged, this happened, and mm -hmm. she said that too, and yet in Russia there are friends that she has still there, which I speak about on our next episode, who believe that she was paid, that it wow. was all made up. So if people want to support those in the Ukraine, they, they should be thoughtful about what they're sharing in, in case they're kind of making the situation worse for them. How can we get better at spotting fake news? I know that spelling mistakes are something to look out for. What else? There are three things we can ask ourselves. Firstly, who? Who is sharing this stuff and why are they spreading it? Um, look at the account. Has it got photos, pictures of family, hobbies? Then think about um, where, where. Where was this shared? Is it... Ukraine? Does it look like there? Is the weather right? What about landmarks, location? And finally, think about when. Does it look like old footage? Does it look like something that's from right now? Because like you say, if we spread this stuff, we become a part of the problem and we affect people who are caught up in this and being harmed by it. So it's really important that we all just stop and think before we share stuff. Mariana, thank you so much. It's such an important subject.